What is up guys? It is your official host, Michael Reed Kramer, and welcome back to the Michael and Mom Talk Cancer Podcast. I am here with my amazing mother. Yes, I am the other official host. I am Ashley, aka Michael's mom, of course, and we are so excited because we have someone with, well, his name is Chris, but he is also known as, like I'm known as mom, he is known as Mr. Pound for Pound. I've been always seeing you guys on my phone, so it's like actually great to see you guys. <laughs> it's, it's great to see you too, man. We're so happy you're here. I wish we were seeing you like in person. It's so funny how like Zoom, Riverside, all of these things have been yeah. like, like actually like we're meeting, but yeah. we still haven't met you. Where do you live? Chris, where do you live? I live in uh, California, Southern California. I live in Riverside County. Nice. I where used to live in Florida, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, Orlando, I know you guys. Right? Yeah, I live yeah. in Orlando. Yeah, nice. I lived in Miami as well, but I was like super little, so I don't remember that much from Miami. Cool. Yeah, Miami's nice. We're, we're gonna come see you next time we're in California. Yeah, yeah, we have. Your brother lives there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My uncle's oh, that's there, cool. so yeah. All right, let's get into it. All right, for, do you want to say like, do you want to explain how we actually met you? Because it's, so, I, yeah. I love this. So I met I met Chris through social media. I remember just scrolling. Instagram reels and his account pops up and it's like this guy with I'm pretty sure liver cancer, right? Yes Lifting heavy weights looking strong and I'm like, oh This guy we're definitely gonna become friends I could just tell from his social media and like his his mindset that he was a strong a strong person and I I knew we were gonna connect immediately Yeah, when I met uh, Michael it was weird because I remember I saw him follow me and I was like, wait, I know this guy. I've seen this guy before on my social media. And so I followed him back and then I was looking through his page. I was like, yes, I remember this dude because I've seen him before I got diagnosed. And then no after, way. Yeah. You saw yes. him before? Yeah, I remember. He was like at around like I think 40, 30,000 followers. But then when I got diagnosed, I remember I saw you. There's another dude, Jace. Um yeah. I saw, there's another one, his name is Giovanni, his Instagram is The Last Him, and okay. I, I recognize you guys, so then I remember, like, it's so crazy how you guys just, like, follow me back, and then you guys, I've asked you guys so many questions about stuff, and you guys are always out here helpful, answering my yeah, questions, of course. and I enjoy that because it just shows that you guys have a good heart, and you guys are trying to lift up people. Aww. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're here for, man. So do you mind telling us, how did, like... Because you're this young guy. You're, yeah, as you can 20, tell just from the video. you 20 years old. You're a baby. Even from the video, you can just look at your shoulders and arms. You're in, you're in wicked shape for yeah. someone going through what you're going through. What happened? How did you find out you even had cancer? And what were you feeling before? Yeah, we, we so, just want the whole, we want the whole story. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, it, it's a long story. So I remember last year there was um, a s- issue I had with my stomach and it was getting really bloated. And I thought it was a parasite because I had just went to Yosemite and I thought because I like was in the water, maybe it got into my system somehow. So I did all these tests, you know, colonoscopies, endoscopies, and they didn't find anything. And then one day I'm at home and I'm just throwing up a lot. And then my mom, she's like, we have to go to the hospital. And I'm like, no, I need to work tomorrow. That's all I was worried about working. And she's like, no, Chris, you got to go to the hospital because this has been happening for such a while, such a long time. And then so we went and they found it in my CT and they said, yeah, you have cancer. And then when they told me, I was pretty like shocked. But then like, I don't know, like I wasn't like scared, but I was just shocked. And I remember I called my dad, but I wouldn't call my mom because I don't know. I just couldn't call my mom because I didn't want to tell her. So I asked the, the doctor if she could call my mom. But I told my dad. And then after that, I lost my memory because my ammonia was at like 250 so oh, it's a neurotoxin that my liver is supposed to, you know, um, what's it called, filter out. But right. it just straight, went straight up to my brain, so I couldn't think or anything. So that whole day, I don't remember. I just remember a part where I was trying to, like, fight the doctors. But, like, wow. it's just, like, a little flash memory I have. But I think I just, like, lost all, like, consciousness. Yeah. That's, so did your mom take you to the ER or you went by yourself? I went with my dad. My dad okay. took me. Okay. Yeah. 
And just from the ER, they did the CT scan. Was mm -hmm. it like that same day that they were like, you're in the ER and you're like, oh, sorry, you have cancer? That yeah, it was, a, it was that quickly. It was like a second wow. after another. It wasn't even like a bunch of tests or like they even said, oh, you might have this. It was just like out of nowhere. They just said, nope, you have it. And then they were like, and it's stage four. So I had, when I was in the <laughs> ICU, I was like knocked out for like three days. When I woke up, the oncologist came and he was saying that it's a rare form of liver cancer called fibrolamellar carcinoma. And then when he um, told me that, he was like, and you have to go to another hospital. And he recommended Loma Linda, City of Hope, and um, UCI um, because he said that the top surgeons there didn't want to work on me because they said it was going to be like, it was going to be a really hard thing. And then they said that Loma Linda would be better. And then I remember when he told me like, you have like around two to three years to live. What? And then, wow. Yeah, but um, when he said that, I remember like I wasn't sad because of me. I was sad because I saw my dad's face and he was just like Aww. devastated. And then I was like, Aww. no. But um, we luckily I have a older brother that he was like very very helpful during the situation because he um, started looking for foundations. And when he found Fibro Fighters, they're the foundation for fibrolamellar carcinoma. They gave me good news. They said that um, you have a good chance. We're having a lot of research. We're doing a lot of new studies, new tests, new um, therapy. So they've been putting me on all these treatments. And I've been, my tumor has, from the beginning, my tumor has shrunk, I think, 50% around that. Wow, much. that's great. Yeah, so, so I'm happy they, about that. Did they end up doing surgery or you've just been, not just, but you've been doing treatment? I've been doing treatment and they are speaking about doing surgery because they still need to get the tumor board and they have to like talk about it first okay. because they don't want to do something that's going to like affect me even worse, you know. So I didn't know how, how serious this was based on like I saw your social media posts, like I saw like stage four cancer, but I didn't know they literally told you you have two years to live. Like I didn't know this was a thing. So yeah, it no was idea. that and that that was just a scary like thing to hear, but I have faith in god that i'm gonna you know persevere through this and i just keep you know trying to push every day and just trying to live as normal as life as i could because i know a lot of people and i just saw your post where you were talking about how a lot of people are saying they can't do this and that with yeah. a chronic illness but i feel like you just you can you just have to like tell yourself you know what this is going to be something i have so i'm not going to let it beat me down so i'm exactly. just going to live the rest of my life as I want to, obviously there's going to be some things that are going to be harder than others, but just try your best, and you just got to try your best, basically. You're, you're amazing. Yeah, yeah. So you wait, have a great mindset. How long ago, actually, were you diagnosed? In January of this year, yeah. Of, of 2024, so? Yes. Okay, so you're yeah. like right in the first year. Yeah, it was oh a my. crazy, crazy year, yeah. Do you, did you live at home, and do you live at home now? I live at home, and I always lived at home. I was always helping out, but it it kind of sucks sometimes because I do want to work and I want to like, and I want to provide, but like it's hard sometimes because I'll get tired, and it's just like there's certain times in the day where like my body just says, "Nope, <laughs> you're not gonna get up right yeah, now." No, I, I totally get that. I get that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you live your life, but I'm also gonna tell you because I'm a mom. I'm gonna say give yourself grace. You are going through so much. Yeah, yeah. Give yourself grace. So I'm sure Michael wants to talk about this too. So how did you go from from being diagnosed with cancer and then you started? Was Mr. Pound for Pound already your Instagram before? So, yeah, because um, there is a when, when you're in the weightlifting community, people tend to say, oh, like, you're this strong. But then there's like a saying where if you're this much, if you weigh this much and you lift this much, it depends how much you weigh and how much you lift, how strong you kind of like are because there are smaller people that can't lift as much. So I've always been like a small guy, but for some reason I've been able to lift like a lot of weight. So like my squat was like, what, 500? My bench was 315. Oh, wow. wow. And then my deadlift was like 500. So people would always like say like, oh, you're pound for pound strongest. So I was like, oh, I should say Mr. Pound for Pound. Like a name that's a like. sick name. I, I, yeah, that's a sick name. Actually, people should follow you on Instagram, Mr. Pound for Pound. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I came up with that name, and, and like I've loved it ever since. So I was like, I'm not gonna change it. <laughs> it's great. It's like a trademark. I love it. Yeah, it's cool. And 
Yeah, go ahead. So tell me, what's what's the because you're doing immunotherapy. Yeah. So what's that been like for you? But because you did chemo as well. So basically, we had three chemo drugs I'm doing, or three chemo drugs I was doing. It was oxaliplatin, Gemzar, and um, Lenvima, Lenvatinib. It's uh, chemo pills. I had to take two pills a day. So I started getting a reaction to the oxaliplatin. It was like a four-hour, like, it would take four hours to, for me to get the infusion. And then I started getting, like, really cold, and, like, I would shake a lot, or I would just, like, not feel great. And then they just stopped. And then my doctor said, okay, we're going to switch this with the immunotherapy because that was, like, the plan. And the immunotherapy was, like, it's, like, 30 minutes, so it's, like, way shorter. And it doesn't, it doesn't make me as sick as the oxaliplatin. The oxaliplatin would make me throw up so much, and mm. I hated it. <laughs> I did not like throwing yeah. up. Yeah, no, throwing no. up's not fun. No it's one likes throwing up. I've, I've thrown up a lot when I was really sick. I threw up, like, no, I threw yeah. up well, hundreds I, of times. I, I, I'm going to go with thousands. I'm, I'm no, like sticking, so many times I'm when I was really sick. It's yeah. so hot. So different, but my cancer was actually in my liver as well. It was hepatosplenic T cell lymphoma. So hepato, spleen, so in my liver and spleen. And my disease now is actually in my liver still. I have chronic GVHD in my liver. So I, I get the liver part. Like the liver is a, a tough organ, but the, yeah. the good thing is like it's very regenerative. Mm -hmm. Like that's the good thing about it. It can sustain a lot of damage. Yeah, but the liver it, also does so much. It does so much. It filters everything. I don't yeah. think people give the liver enough credit for everything it does. Yeah, and I noticed that because I could eat like a piece of chicken, like a little chicken nugget, and because it's fried, my liver will like have a hard yeah. time, like you know. So then I just like avoid stuff like that now. Yeah, me too. It's the yeah. same thing with me. I, like fried food is like, it's I feel worst. like shit after. Mm -hmm. I can't. I, I can barely do it. Like, it's not, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's and not then. Ideal. But Michael, I saw like the photos of Michael when he was starting. He looks completely way better. Like he looks amazing from the beginning. Cause I saw like his face was like, like so like. <laughs> what's it called when? What, what's that called? Bloated. When, I was just bloated. You're just the whole your whole body was bloated, right? The steroids, dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, I was it wasn't that I was even eating a lot. It was just the steroids all of a sudden such, such a high dose mm. for so long, which is what caused like all my joint issues is the steroids. Yeah, that sucks too cuz like your joints like it's like it does everything for you cuz you you don't even yeah. think about it. So I could just imagine, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't like bench press or anything really like but I, I have gone back in, into the gym and I can do like chest flies and like other exercises, but I can't really like do this motion it hurts too much yeah. but. i'll see i'll see you and i see you in the gym all the time and that's good yeah. uh, i always try to tell people like even if you can't like you know lift as much as like the other person just try your hardest just try yeah, like yeah. even going to walk going on a walk is amazing like everything just you just get that um blood flowing in your system and it makes you feel better after yeah, yeah i mean i was a, i was a gym bro like you before all this you know i was yeah. in the gym six days a week deadlifting squatting bench pressing everything you know, and then this happened, and I, I, it's just different now, but the gym is, I mean, working out in fitness has been a huge mm -hmm. part of everything, and it's like you say, I think being in shape is what made me survive everything, because my body going into cancer was so strong, and like, you always talk about, you say muscle mass is the reason you're alive, because your muscle mass kept you there, and I think that's a big part of why I'm alive, too, was just getting into the cancer, going in there strong. Yeah, because I, I remember, I have photos of, like, when I, like, when I started, and like my face was like, like super skinny. My whole body was skinny. I was just, my legs they got like tiny, and my dad was worried about that. He was like, "Chris, I don't want to see you like this." And I was like, "Dad, I feel like," and I told my dad like, "I'm gonna keep like pushing because I don't want to see myself like this either, because it's just such a weird thing when you just see yourself like one day and then the next day you're just like that." It's kind of like a sucky situation. Yeah, it, it is. You but, go, it goes quick. Yeah, but you can only do what you can do, and that's the other message is you have to adapt like to what your body can do. We agree that you can always do something, though, even if it's something small. I remember Michael do, lifting three-pound weights in the hospital, and we're like, that's what you can do, that's what you can do. Yeah. So whatever it is, and I love what you just said about walking because that's not just that's not just physical. Like It's like also the mental health, and I think especially for you guys... 
because you before this you were already going to the gym I think part of your mental health has been continuing I'm sure you're going to agree continuing that makes you feel good and normal and that's part of who you are yeah there is a there is like a a span of like a week and a half where my I had like a urinary infection from I don't know from what but I this was like affecting me and then I had like a back I had a back pain it was like the worst thing ever and I would like cry every night oh. and then I remember one day I was like you know I'm gonna just try to like start stretching so I started like my mornings off just stretching on the floor just like um doing butterflies and stretching out my pelvis areas and it it made a way a bigger difference than anything else because I felt like okay now that I have this like now that I actually stretched, I can actually move around and not feel bad. Oh my God. I just agree with you so much. I think sometimes it's like catch 22 that we feel like we have pain. So we want to stop moving. And in fact, when you start moving so often, it will help relieve your pain. There's like even a thing in your brain, like when you release endorphins, that's the first thing it does. It helps to reduce pain. So I love that you said that. But can I, can I ask a question about... The cancer, like, did was there any cancer in your family before this, or were you just, like, out of left field? Mine was out of left field. My uh, parents didn't really, like, have any, like, experience with anyone having cancer. And, yeah, the only other person that I know that has cancer that, like, is a relative of mine is, like, a great uncle that I have. But that's just, like, but that's because he's older. So, yeah. like, I understand that. And I've been trying to, like, you know, cheer him up and tell him, like, this and that. But I understand for, like, an older individual, it's going to be kind of harder for, like, to get out of bed and stuff. So it kind of, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, I, I try to encourage them, but I understand sometimes when they just want to stay in bed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's different. It's also, like, yeah. when you're younger, you have that motivation and drive because you know you're going to recover quicker. It's different, for sure. But I love that you're so open because I feel especially like at your age sometimes and I, I'm not trying to be sexist here but a lot of times men too especially at your age they don't want to share what they're going through and what made you was there something that made you decide to share or was it just that you were already posting and you're like you know what I'm going through this I'm just going to continue yeah I think it was more of like um it was that too but then I saw when I remember when I opened my Instagram it was so weird I was in the ICU and there is a there is a, a dude, his name is J S P Cancer. Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure you guys know who that is. And then yeah. I saw him post and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna just post. So I just told everyone on my Instagram like this is what's going on and I'm gonna just keep trying to fight this and then luckily I got a lot of support. It was weird because um I know people that have told me that they lost a lot of people along the way, but I've, like, experienced that as well, but I don't think it's that I lost them. I feel like people just don't know how to express themselves when exactly. they're trying to... <laughs> we talk about that. Yeah, they're trying yeah, to support so someone else. Yeah, yeah, I've had so many people who I've, like, actually saw recently in Miami who, like, I haven't seen in, like, four years, and they've been, like, I've been meaning to reach out to you. I'm sorry. I just didn't know what to say. Like, yeah, you know, they just don't know what to say. They feel awkward. It's, like, a bur They feel like it's a lot to talk to someone who has cancer. They don't know to express themselves it's just, it's just different for them yeah i feel like they don't want to like say something that's like too like sensitive and i understand and i get that but then i see people on the other side where they try to cheer you up and then they try to like they start like saying the most like sensitive things i'm like yo chill chill <laughs> uh, yeah I, I get that a lot I trust me i get that a lot of dms <laughs> like that so I, I understand what you mean but people are just trying to be nice you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> they mean well people can be overwhelming when it comes to cancer and especially all the messages of people like try this herbal tea or cure mm -hmm. your cancer or drink or celery juice yeah or they would like say like hey um what caused it i'm like i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah people, people are like what did you do wrong so i don't get it like you know yeah yeah but i i feel like those people don't um they don't really try to be harmful, but you yeah. just got to, like, I try to tell them, like, hey, like, thanks for, like, being, like, concerned, but, like, this question, I, I have no clue about it. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an oncologist, yeah. so I wouldn't even, know. 
even the doctors don't know. I'm sure yeah. I, I'm looking at you. You were like a healthy individual and you got liver cancer. You didn't, you didn't do anything. It's the same with Michael. And I think often the doctors like, they don't know why Michael mm -hmm. got it. There's not really a reason. So I feel like sometimes these things are, I feel like most of the times these things are just super random and it's yeah. not our fault because we live in this world where like, if I go outside and I go to McDonald's, it's going to say this building is known to cause cancer. So you live in this world where it's like polluted and we can't, we're not, we're not at fault. It's just how the world is right now. Agreed. There's so many outside environmental factors. Yeah. It's very true, you know. But you guys are doing all the right things. Yeah, and you're, and you're, you're doing, doing all the right things. You're doing like, amazing what you're doing, but I, I do want to ask you like, what's your biggest challenge since yeah. you've been diagnosed? Like what's been the hardest thing for you? It's the mental part. It's just, um, Every day, like, I know you probably think about this, too. Every day, you're, like, always thinking, like, dang, I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Or, like, I would always tell myself, like, I hope I don't, you know, I hope I survive till next year. Or I hope I survive till. Yeah. And then it's yeah, such yeah. a hard thing to, like, think about. But, and I don't want to, like, say this and, like, bring people down. But it's just, like, it's a thing you think about a lot because you've experienced that situation when you're in a hospital. And you're just, like, there. And you're, like, dang, what's going to happen? So now you always think that, and yeah, it's just a thought I have. No, trust me, like, I've been thinking, like, life is, like, my treatment's got less recently, and I'm doing better, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, if I relapse or this happens, then boom, I could be dead. So, you know, it is it is something that's always in the back of our minds as cancer patients, cancer survivors. It's I think so it's not true. just in the back of your mind. I mean, that's a thing, like... We, I think we all know that we could die at any time. Like, we know that. We know we could get in a car accident. We know we could get hit by a bus. We know yeah. whatever. But cancer, it's like it puts it, your mortality, like, right in front of you. And you have no choice except to recognize it because you either are doing these drugs that are really hard to survive or you're not going to survive. And it just, like, puts in, especially at your age, I think that's, that's so challenging. And... You were talking about mental health, and I know we talk about mental health a lot. Have you had, like, I know Michael has had a therapist, and it helps him. We know other people that just being in support groups helps. We know people that just say, no, on my own, I'm good. Have you had some something other? I mean, I know the gym, but yeah. have you had something that's helped you, particularly with your mental health? For me, it's been just talking to people. I feel like putting myself out there, I've been able to meet a lot of more people, and I could talk to people if I need if I need to like actually ask a question or if I need help, I'll just ask someone. And I like the I don't know if you I know you guys are an ambassador of the app, the um Cancer Buddies. That's yeah. a good yeah. app. And I it, when I saw you post it, I was like, I'm going to get on there. So yeah. I went on there and I've been meeting people from there and it's cool cuz like you get to hear experiences and it's like a good thing and it you feel good cuz um you know you're not alone and you know other people are going through situations as you are and I know it's not a good thing to say like oh I wish someone else was going through that situation but you know it's like kind of like a heartwarming feeling when you know that you're not alone in this situation yeah that, that's that's why I love cancer buddy I love that app it, it really just connects people it's like it's beautiful it's definitely it's great to have a community like that same with the caregivers how so how are your how are your parents doing? Because I, I'm assuming that you're living at home. Is your brother also there, or is it just you and your parents? I have an older brother and a little sister. And okay, like Michael. Yeah. Little yeah. kid, older brother, little <laughs> sister. Okay. Yeah. yeah, my little sister has been, like, very, very... She's been, like, I think one of the biggest helpers, because I'll be at home sometimes, and she'll be like, Chris, uh, if you need any food, I'll cook for you. And, like, it's so weird, because I remember before, she would be like, the nagger like she'd be like I don't want to do this or I want to do that but now like she sees me she'll be like oh Chris I'll help you this and that and it's like such a like cool thing to see oh that's sweet and how, old, how old is she she is 15 right now that's that Aww. was how old Michael's sister was when he was diagnosed 15 so. yeah yeah, a lot of similarities. Yeah, I was guys. 19 when I was diagnosed same right 19 yeah. the diagnosis? Wow. around like 1920 yeah, yeah but um my parents my mom she's you know like mothers they always try to like they're always on top of you, so she's always, like, telling me, don't do this, don't do that. And then I'm like, okay, okay, mom. <laughs> always calling me. And I'm like, and I'm like, dang, my mom's bugging me. But I understand, like, she's my mom and she loves me. So I, I won't, I, I never try to judge her for that. 
I always give her hugs and stuff. Yeah. And then my dad, my dad's been really helpful too. He always takes me to the, to the, um, to the uh, infusions. He takes me everywhere, and he tries to, you know, give me the best motivation. He's always every day he's telling me, Chris, you just gotta keep going, keep going. But I, I love my dad because he just always like he's been there like. He was there in the hospital when I was in the ICU. He would sleep there sometimes. Like it's like crazy. Like my dad, Aww. I know he suffered a lot, and I always tell him, "Dad, I'm gonna fight for you." And I always tell him that. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. And your mom was looking out for you. She's being a mama bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love my mom. She she always cooks for me too, and I appreciate that. I'll be like, "Mom, can you make this for me?" She's like, "Yeah, sure." I'm like, "Yes, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So your biggest way of coping. What do you think your biggest way of coping is i mean connecting we talked about that like through the app working out are those your biggest like coping mechanisms because there's a lot i'm just if someone tells you you have a year like michael his cancer the average is like eight months but we actually no one like told us that yeah they didn't say that we found it out we found it out online yeah and we've done research since but and and he four years later he's still here Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I feel like Michael's gonna be here for a while. I feel like he's gonna be here. I feel like he's gonna live till he's like old. I, I, you, I, I, I think you too. I'm looking at you, Chris, and I'm like one to two year, two to three year. Wow, no, no way. <laughs> yeah, I, my uh, my oncologist from Foundation is there. Those guys are great because they're like they told my mom they're like we're gonna um we're gonna treat your son like he's our son, like he's our kid. Mm-hmm. And those guys, I text them whenever I can, and they always answer. Every time I need something, they'll, like, help me out with it. And I always ask them questions about some foods. Like, I'll be like, can I eat this? They'll be like, no. I'll be like, okay, I won't eat that. Like, yeah. I always listen to them. And then I think my biggest thing was my faith in God. Um, oh. I've been a Christian, like, my whole life. But I never understood what it meant to be a Christian until this year because I learned to value life more. And now that I've, like, actually, like, experienced stuff that other people haven't, I get to, like, I feel like I get to share that with the world, and I get to, like, explain, like, my experience with that and my experience with, like, my faith in Christ. And I get to share that, and that's beautiful right there. That is so you're, beautiful. You're so beautiful, Chris. I'm just, like... I'm, I'm, Chris, you're, you're destined for greatness. I, I just see it in you, man. Like I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate it. You know, the pe- there's people who get, like, famous online, and they're just, like dumb being doing dumb stuff but you like I <laughs> but would you're love, not dumb yeah i I, lo- I would love to see you just like everywhere doing what we're doing like giving motivational talks and spreading your message everywhere because it's beautiful and it's so great to have you here and well, i do want to ask though do you have like a strict diet you have to follow yeah i was kind of off topic but i just, um, no, not off topic you know. at first it was um there was like they were like saying oh i have to eat this much protein and this and that but then after, like, they kind of said, okay, now you can, like, kind of, like, start eating these new foods. Because I think in the beginning, my liver was so, like, like so affected by the cancer where I couldn't eat certain foods. I remember I would be at home and I would eat, like, something small and I would just throw up. Or, like, I couldn't eat that much food. I would, like, have to eat a little bit and wait, eat a little mm-hmm. bit, wait. Because, like, it would just be so hard on my stomach. But now I'm, like, able to eat more and more. But I try to be, like, I try to eat clean. I try not to eat outside that much because I know, like, outside like people aren't really thinking about other people when they're like cooking their food so you know they're not thinking oh this person might have this they're just trying to like get the food out you know yeah healthy yeah. whole foods that was you too yeah yeah I, I had a bone marrow transplant i couldn't eat outside food for like a year because of bacteria and stuff so yeah, yeah especially like sushi clean. Um, yeah, yeah. I still don't eat sushi. I know it I never, sucks because I I love sushi, but I'm like, you know it. what? You never liked it. <laughs> I, I I only love, had it. I love listen, sushi. Listen, I don't like anything like with fish, and you know, sushi is just like fishy to me. And yeah, I never liked fish. I like the uh, one of my favorite things to eat is salmon, salmon and rice. So I eat that a yeah. lot. Yeah, but but yeah, that my. I, I used to eat salmon too. growing up. I used to eat salmon growing up, but I haven't had salmon in years. You can't. Can you eat salmon or yeah, not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. can. It just has to be cooked. Yeah, he just... can't. He wouldn't be able to eat it raw. But... Yeah, I can't either. They say yeah. because um, the immunotherapy makes my immune system uh, when it makes exactly. it fight the cancer. I think it like kind of like makes it weaker everywhere. It, else. it yeah. does. Yeah, it does. Immunotherapy is is like an immunosuppressant in a way. Yeah. Yeah, it's. it's and tough then I have body. to. Um, I'm thinking of getting hormone therapy maybe when I'm done. 
it's so weird because they said my chest is low. I don't feel like it's lower, but I guess it is. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. <laughs> Your testosterone, like you're getting that TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah, well, I haven't gotten it yet, but we're talking about doing it. So I want to do that. I'm sure that would help with the energy too. Because I'm pretty sure mine are like normal levels now, but they were low at one point, I'm sure. But I don't. I was too sick to even do anything about it. But I think my, mine's fine, right? Like we checked it. Yeah, we checked it. Not. It's a slightly low on the lower end, but he's yeah. It's, normal. it's not like out two of the normal. years ago. It was low, but mm -hmm. it's come up. So, do you have a treatment plan? Like, do you know when? Do you have a treatment plan, like a roadmap? Because like yeah. for Michael, he had a roadmap for chemo and everything. And then he's had complications, which changed everything. But do you have, a, like, a plan? Well, the plan right now is just to, like, they will do, like, I think every time they do, like, 15, they check me for the CT with the CT. Okay. So, like, I think it's, like, every, like, two months they will check the CT, right? And then they see, they based off how it looks, they will, like, see what to do. Because okay. right now they don't know, like, exactly how it's going to, like, they don't have like a complete roadmap, but they have like a mini roadmap for each like individual like section, you know. Okay. Okay, I want to ask you another question. So you said that for you, like going online and like Michael and Jace and there was someone else that you mentioned that you would reach out and ask for advice. But is there any advice that you would give to someone that's like newly diagnosed or what advice what would be a, the greatest advice that you would give to someone so i actually had a friend today he came up to me because he, his hormones got messed up and then he was telling me he was like yo uh what do you think i should do and i was telling him well you gotta just wait for what your doctors say but you can't like let this beat you up because i was seeing him in the gym he didn't feel like doing anything and i was like yo but just don't don't like stop doing what you love because if you stop doing what you love, you're going to beat yourself up more and you're going to be even more sick because when you get depressed, I feel like that just makes your whole body like in this state where it just doesn't want to do anything. So it doesn't want to fight anymore. But when your brain is like optimistic and you're trying to like find the best solution or you're like, okay, this is happening, but I'm not going to let it beat me up. I feel like your brain allows your body to fight with its full potential. Mindset. Yeah, mindset. Mindset. It's beautiful. We totally believe in mindset. It changes everything. It changes your chemistry. It definitely does. Yeah. Should yeah. we ask some fun questions? Do you want to hear? Do you want some fun questions? Yeah. We had some, some he's like, yeah. <laughs> serious ones. Let's okay, do fun let's ones. Think. So, what person, just like in the world, social media, anywhere, this is just like sort of fun and sort of serious, has had the most impact on you in your life? There's a YouTuber that I've been watching since I was little. And his name is uh, Face Rug. <laughs> I love that okay. guy. Okay. Yeah, he just, he makes all, he used to make like these haunted videos or gaming videos. But right now he like, every time you see him post, he's just so positive And like, he's like the most like positive person. He's always smiling. So I love watching him. That's like my favorite guy. Oh, That's very, awesome. very cool. All right. Another fun one. If you could have any superpower in the world, you can even make it up. What would be your superpower? That's a that's a crazy one because I watch a lot of anime. I watch a lot of anime, so I, there's like a lot of powers that I've seen on there. There's um, there's a character. His name is uh, Goku, okay. and he could like transform. So he's a Saiyan. He's like an alien, but he just loves fighting by basically. And every time he like uh, someone like let's say someone he's protect, he need, he'll get stronger. But he transforms to like different like states. It's cool. So I'd probably have his power. Can I just tell you, we had a conversation about that, like, today. We're like, that would be so cool if you could, like, morph into something else. Yeah. That's so funny. That's so funny. Or maybe I'll be, like, his shirt avatar. He has all the yeah, elements. That would be a sick. That would be a sick avatar power state. To Going to yeah. the avatar. We love that. Yeah. We love that. You to control fire, water, everything. Oh, sick. my God. We love Aang. <laughs> well, if you had a, okay, let me think. What should I ask? Okay, if you had a magic wand, what would you do with it? Anything. Like, you can do anything, you know, in the world. I don't know. I'd probably, like, I don't know. I, I, I'd i probably do what um would be helpful for others. I feel like I don't have, like, a reason to, like, because there's people that say, like, if I had this, I'd be, like, a ruler of the world. But I'm, like, bro, at that point, like, it's not even fun. <laughs> like, if you're, like, yeah. if you rule the world, like, like, what fun would it be? Like, I feel like I, like, just, like, try to, like, help people or, like, you know, 
do like cool stuff and like shows or whatever. I'd probably I'd probably be like an entertainer. <laughs> that's so, I don't think that's we ever cool got one. that answer. That's I a love, great answer. Unique. I totally love that answer. Okay, this I don't know what this is gonna be like for you, but how would your friends describe you? Hmm, I wonder because I have my friend Noah. He's like one of my best friends. And he always tells me, like, bro, like, I don't know how you're doing this. So I think he'd probably see me as, like, an inhuman person. <laughs> like, bro, like, how do you, like, keep going? Not like, inhuman, superhuman. Superhuman, there we go. Superhuman. <laughs> I think I love that. What about your, well, how'd your mom describe you? Coming uh, from she'd mom probably describe mom. me as, like, stubborn. Because <laughs> I'm too, like, every time I, like, do something, I want to do it. And then, like, she'd be like, Chris, don't do that. I'm like, no, I want to go. I want to do this. So she'd probably see me as stubborn. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna switch that stubborn to like strong. Yeah, we'll just call, we'll just call you like strong and resilient. How's that? Yeah. You can ask. All right, I think it's our last question, right? Do you want to ask? Do you want to ask about music? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite music? I started getting into rock a lot. Um, nice. I listen to a lot of uh, Japanese rock actually because oh, I like anime. So a lot of like the openings in the anime they have like Japanese rock, and then I listen to it. And I was like, let me explore more. So I like Japanese rock. I like American rock. I like, uh, I've been listening to My Chemical Romance a lot recently. Oh, they're good. Yeah, yeah. so they're good. Uh, Radiohead. Radiohead's a good band, yeah. too. Yeah. Queen. I just love rock. Yeah. I like rap, too. But I feel like sometimes when I'm, like, listening to rock, they have, like, a message. Like, every time you listen to the song, you have, like, you can hear it. Like, Hotel California. Oh, like, I'll listen to it, and I can interpret it in so many ways. Because, yeah, like, exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm like, dang, what is this guy trying to say? And, like, I don't know what he's trying to say, but I'll interpret it the way I do. <laughs> That's the point of art. Yeah. I, yeah. Lo I love that. I know, we are going to ask about movies or TV, but TV sounds like anime. What about a movie? Uh, movies, I love all the Marvel movies. Okay. I recently watched a Deadpool movie. That was good. Yeah. Did you guys watch the new um, Quiet Place movie? No, no, I haven't. Oh, you have to, bro. The main character is a cancer patient. And it's oh. such a, you have to watch oh, yeah. it. it. It made me cry. It was good. Does he die? Because usually in movies, they No, it's a, it, it's a girl, but um, I, I don't want to spoil it no, for you. No, don't tell. Don't. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, don't. Right, Michael? Yeah, don't, don't spoil it. Our <laughs> listeners are going to like be plugging their ears like, wait, I haven't seen it yet. So, yeah. okay. It's called right. Quiet Place Day One. Okay. okay. We're going to yeah. check that out. I haven't yeah. heard of it. Okay. We'll go for it. All right. We do have a signature question, Michael. You go for it. So if you knew you were going to die tomorrow, what would you do today? Who knows? I, I feel like it depends. Like, it depends where I'm at. I'd probably want to, like, go somewhere with my family. Be like, let's travel somewhere. Let's go somewhere nice. Because I feel like that's going to be a good memory, you know, to just have. Instead of, like, you know, like, doing something. Like, I know people, I ask people, like, what would you do? And they'll be like, oh, I'd probably, like, rob a train or something. Like, bro, like, chill out. <laughs> you guys are crazy. I don't want to, like, so go crazy. to, like, like, Japan or something. Do something cool. Like, travel. Have a good memory. You know, that'd be cool. But I love that with your family. I think like almost like pretty much everyone says that if it's their last day, whatever it is that they say they want to do, people usually say like with their family or the person they love. And oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. Oh my gosh, Chris, you're just you're inspirational. You're this 20 year old guy that you just like your mindset and your positive energy is just I'm blown away. You're absolutely beautiful. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, thank, much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And this is an official goodbye from your host, Michael Kramer, and... The other official host, Ashley Kramer, and our beautiful guest, Chris, pound Bye, for pound. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate being on here. It was a good... Yeah. Thank you, everyone, and we'll talk soon. Mwah.